Welcome to Lone Beam Babble. 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 Hello and welcome to Lone Beam Babble, your source for all things Lone Beam. I'm Robbie Robertson. And I'm Paul Sims. And on this episode of Lone Beam Babble, we'll play clips from our interview with Destiny Hankton, account executive at Lone Beam. Uh, it was really a great time with lots of laughs, and I think you'll enjoy it. All right. Uh, welcome, uh, Destiny, to uh, Lone Beam Babble. Um, we, I, I thought we'd just kick it off uh, by starting with you telling us a little bit about uh, your time with Lone Beam. You know, how long have you been here? Uh, you know, uh, what has gone on since you started? Sure. So thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Paul, for the opportunity to chat today and actually put on some real coals for once this week. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that doesn't happen Robbie? that frequently now. <laughs> yeah. but, but not Robbie. I, went to go put, I meant to go put my collared shirt on, but uh, my Zoom shirt, as they say. Um, but uh, I was just out of another meeting, so I, did, I just had to stick in this stuff. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, <laughs> so, so I've been with Lone Beam for eight months now. I joined the team December of last year. Um, so it, it does, it's not that long, but it's, it's funny how I, I don't feel like the, the new kid on the block anymore. Um, so prior to then, uh, I did work in client and account management in the, the lending industry, but more on the appraisal management side. So slightly different part of the industry, but I still worked with a lot of the same vendors uh, and banks that are our clients here at, at Loan B. Uh, also had a, a stint in vendor management in Freddie Mac uh, before, before then. So I I have, I have definitely uh, have been in this industry a little while and have been kind of enjoying uh, segueing into a slightly different part uh, here at Lone Bean. Wow, eight months. It seems longer than that. It does. It, it really it does. does. It does. It seems <laughs> like uh, you've been here forever. Like, <laughs> when was Destiny not here? <laughs> Time flies with this stuff for sure. It, so, it, well, it's been a busy year, too, so that has a lot to do with it. It's been an, an eventful mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, what have you enjoyed most about your time here at Lone Beam? So I, I definitely like the size of the company. Uh, you know, Lone Beam's, you know, not a very large company. So I've been able to, to meet and work with everybody from the top executives uh, to all the different teams uh, here at Lone Beam. Uh, I did work at uh, another startup uh, prior in my history. So I, I do enjoy uh, companies this size because you really get a chance to get in uh, on the ground level uh, and kind of not only see change happen, but kind of be a part of that change happening also. Yeah, I, honestly, that's what I like most about the small company as well mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, it's a lot more tight knit. You get to know everyone up and down the food chain outside of your kind of core job responsibilities. Uh, but also you kind of being able to affect change a little bit more because you, you do talk to leadership. Um, so what have you been doing to uh, kind of keep connected with people during the pandemic, maybe inside uh, the office uh, as well as outside, maybe uh, friends and family? Sure. So, you know, definitely there's a lot of Zoom meetings, kind of like we're doing today, Zoom happy hours. Um, you know, I've just tried to be intentional and conscientious about reaching out to my coworkers, my friends and family. Uh, my brother, uh, him and his wife recently bought a house. So we actually had a virtual housewarming party last weekend, uh, which is a first. But, you know, they, they went room to room and showed us the house and their yard and <laughs> their projects that they're working on. Yeah, that, that, that was it was cute. It was really cute. But it was an opportunity for, you know, us as a family to still kind of connect and still be a part of each other's lives, even though we can't physically be with each other. And so where are you now? Uh, is, is this your office or... Uh, so actually, at the moment, I'm at my bar because it uh, in the kitchen because it has the best lighting. Um, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but I usually office in a, a corner of my my second bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds good. Um, and so uh, let me ask you this: do you, uh, do you have any hobbies or interests that you could share just to get to know Destiny? 
Sure. So I do like to bake. A lot of people don't know that about me. I love to bake goodies from scratch. Uh, I did a lot of baking early on in the pandemic, which was good or bad, however you want to take it. <laughs> uh, so I had to kind of <laughs> slow down on that a little bit because we don't need all these cookies and cakes and pies sitting around. Uh, but holiday time, special occasions, I'm usually the person that my friends and family are coming to saying, hey, can you, can you bake us up something yummy? Uh, I, I think my specialty is probably either New York style cheesecake or peach cobbler. Wow. Really? Nice. We, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's one thing that I'm definitely, definitely missing. There is um, a cheesecake uh, place, Cheesecake Royale over right, right near us and uh, mm. definitely missing that. Do you, would, do you make bread? You know, I haven't gotten into breads too much, but it's funny you say that. I was thinking about trying that this winter because I want to do something, you know, a little different, kind of get a new challenge. So I think I'm about to get into breads here soon. Nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tried bread when the pandemic first started. I yeah, because you, you couldn't because you couldn't find bread in the store. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to do my own bread. It worked out pretty well. Did it really? You know, uh, yeah, but don't you have to have, like, have to, a starter or something like that? Like you, uh, get, you have to, to get the yeast mm -hmm. or something. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, you got. I got the yeast. Got some, you know, warm water. It, it foams up. It's pretty neat. Uh, the whole process takes a while, but mine tasted very, um, very yeasty. Yeah, uh. it was like a, <laughs> the, the one or two times. <laughs> Mine did that too. The one or two times I've tried it, bread is is tricky. It's Bread's tricky. tricky. It's very yeah. tricky. It's very tricky. I watch those uh, baking contest shows, yeah. you know, and uh, it's when it's bread week. I watch the British baking show. I love that show, <laughs> and uh, it's bread week. It's like a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I did try my bread. I think I've I've, I'm, I've checked my box. I'm all done with. Uh, bread. You you did that. Mm -hmm. Moved on. <laughs> I did it, uh, tried it twice. The second one was better than the first. But still, I can go buy bread from the store yeah. now, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's change gears, make some, uh, maybe some stuff that's a little bit more fun. I kind of put together a bunch of fun questions that we could ask. Uh, sure. Uh, just to kind of figure out a little bit about you. Uh, the first one is kind of pretty traditional, you know, your uh, bucket list. So. Yeah. Uh, do you have a bucket list? And if so, what's at the top of that bucket list? You know, I guess I have a, a bucket list. I do like to travel. Um, so <laughs> I, I know everybody says this, but I definitely want to go to the Maldives or Bora Bora uh, one of these days. I want to pretend to be Gilligan on my own little deserted island. Um, I'm very much a beach, uh, sun and sand sort of girl when I, Absolutely. When I vacation. Absolutely, I am too. Yep, yep. So top of the bucket list. Yeah, my uh, there's an, there. there's an, yeah, there's an island called uh, Turtle Island off the mm -hmm. coast of Tahiti, uh, or uh, is it Bora Bora? One of those two. Um, I really want to visit. They got the little bungalows. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely um, want to do an overwater bungalow. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, Paul, do you want to you want to ask Destiny a question from the list? Here? Yeah, let's go over here and do. Um, let's see. Uh, how about this one? If you could go back and tell yourself something in high school, <laughs> now going back telling your high school self something, what would it be? Oh, that's a that's a tricky one. Uh, I, you know, I, there's not a whole lot I would do over. I'm trying to think what I would. You know, I would tell myself to start traveling earlier because um, I think I, I probably didn't start traveling to like my mid to, to late 20s, you know, internationally and getting outside of the United States. But I would say definitely travel earlier, be a little bolder, step out of the lines a little bit. Uh, I, I was actually probably a little more straight laced than some people in high school. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I would say travel more. And that, that's uh, great advice, actually. I think uh, everyone should travel internationally. Mm -hmm. I think it changes your perspective. My wife and I mm -hmm. spent a year in Europe when we were in our uh, early 20s and just kind of changes your perspective on a whole lot of things. Absolutely. Very valuable. Mm -hmm. It does. I agree. Totally. You know, when's the right, uh, what's the right age to start taking your kids abroad? You know, like, I don't, like, my wife and I loved Rome. We'd like to take the kids. But, uh, I'm thinking they're going to be so bored out of their mind yep. looking at the Coliseum at this age. I, I, I think ours are ready. getting old enough. Ours are eight and 10. And I think that's getting close enough. I want them to be able to, yeah. to, to remember it though. You know, it, it, it can't be wasted if they're, if they're too young. 
Yeah, I don't think they necessarily have to appreciate it, but because you're right, they probably won't. But I think the experience, even, you know, at 10, 12, your early teens, I think would be really good for them. We really loved Venice. And, you know, that's place of thinking. Well, it so, is. Mm-hmm. Go we now. Like to, it's not going to be yeah. there much longer. <laughs> so we really would like to get them to see that before it goes, goes yeah. to put. Uh, so uh, another fun question. Um, if you're stranded on a desert island, <laughs> deserted island, not a <laughs> desert, or a desert. It's a, a it deserted either. island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all your primary needs are cared for. So you have food, you have water, mm-hmm. all that's all good. Uh, what other two items do you wish you had with you to make your time on the island better? Uh, on a deserted, I, I would definitely need Netflix. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to assume something uh, that I can watch Netflix on. Uh, but we're going to count that as one. And then number two would be a bottle of bourbon. Uh, <laughs> I can't go anywhere without that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I respect that. So, hey, Destiny, let me ask you this. So, uh, you're a big Netflix Netflix fan. What are you mm-hmm. uh, what, what are you into right now? Oh, so, you know, that's a hard, because I've watched so much TV in recent months that I'm kind yeah. of taking a little bit of a break right now, because I'm, I'm definitely a TV person, but you can only watch so much TV. But I did recently watch The Politician. I thought that was a cute little uh, kind of lighthearted series. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. I, yeah. That's, that's the one I think I watched last weekend, so the most recent. So hey Destiny, let me uh, change gears just a little bit. We can come back to the um, we can come back to the lighthearted questions. But hey, uh, tell me, can you walk me through uh, what's the typical day for you at Lone Beam? What do you do? What's your responsibilities? Who do you talk to? Um, how, how does that work as an, an account executive? Sure. So as a regional account executive, I uh, report into our VP of sales, Wes. Uh, I have three peers on the the AE team. So, you know, we're kind of here to help support uh, our, our client base. So that starts uh, at day one. So a big part of my role is helping to onboard our new clients, uh, kind of being their primary point of contact through that implementation phase uh, to sh- ensure they get all the tools and resources and education uh, to be able to, to utilize Lone Beam and implement it within their process. Uh, also, so after they're fully implemented and up and running, uh, you know, I serve as, you know, that point person for the client. So I will say day to day, it changes by the day. There's just really no blueprint for, for being an account executive. I could be helping somebody uh, with technical issues or, or with setting up an integration. Uh, I could help them um, work through any kind of kinks or issues they may have or, or just questions they have on a day to day basis. You know, just meeting with our clients and making sure that the product we provide, uh, you know, meets their needs uh, and that if there's any new information that they aren't aware of, that they're getting that information and and get it in kind of a timely fashion. So on a day to day basis, it, it really, it really varies. And that's actually one of the things I like you know, a lot about the job is that it, it changes on a day-to-day basis. It's definitely not boring. That's for sure. Definitely. And so uh, can you tell us who is your favorite client and who is your least favorite client? No, there's no such thing. <laughs> there, there's no there's such thing. They're, they're all my favorite clients, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a fun, uh, fun question. All right. Would you rather have the ability to read minds Mm. or control things with your thoughts? I would like to control things uh, with my thoughts. I don't think I want to hear everybody's, I don't think I want to read minds. I don't want to know what's going on in people's heads. <laughs> Cause that, I'm, with that... <laughs> you. I'm with you a hundred percent. I, you know, ignorance is bliss. Yes. You know, yes. I don't need to hear what's That's going to open up mind. a Pandora's box. I don't want to get into, mm-hmm. but if I could I totally put stuff agree. up, that would be great. <laughs> I would be 800 pounds. Yes. <laughs> Bowl of popcorn floating to the couch. Yeah. <laughs> I'd just be floating along. That's like Wally. Remember Wally? They all like uh, uh, yeah. they're on their little <laughs> machine on the ship. <laughs> yep. So there's, there's skeletons even shrink. <laughs> Um, uh, here's a question that's been written down, and uh, <laughs> let's, see, let's see how this one goes. Uh, you have an elephant. Okay. Mm. You can't give it away and you can't sell it. What do you do with it? 
so actually this is probably a better thing about me that people don't know i am obsessed with elephants mm-hmm. like <laughs> i want to go to bali one day and like play with elephants uh i well i will say i i don't necessarily like the treatment of elephants at some of these facilities but they do have actual animal sanctuaries but i have love elephants and if i had an elephant i would keep it in my backyard and uh they would be okay I did not actually. <laughs> not, I, a tip of the cap to you, sir. I think one of my children's books was uh, they had an elephant for a pet and it was in the backyard. You know, like imagine an elephant being in your. I mean, the only answer that I could come up with is just is to eat it. Like, what, like, what else would you do with it? Oh no, we don't want no. to eat the elephant. <laughs> you can't give it away. You can't sell it unless it's the end of the world. That's well, not an option. <laughs> one one response was to put it on vacation. And send it on vacation. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, I think that's probably a good stopping point. So, um, uh, definitely, I I really enjoyed our time here. I, I appreciate you being on the show with us. Uh, I hope that uh, the world got to got to see a little bit more of a, the human side of you, not just uh, their rep. And that was the idea. Um, so I re- I want to say thank you for uh, for being on the show with us and putting on the, the Zoom shirt today <laughs> and uh, and getting that hair done so you yeah. can be on the show. Much appreciated. I can take a few selfies and. Uh, <laughs> um, enjoy chatting with you guys and everybody got to learn yeah, that I'm go. obsessed with elephants. <laughs> yeah. Take the, take the opportunity to get the selfies in today. Yes. You know, that you yes. Up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Good idea. <laughs> good. All right. Um, okay. Paul, any last words? Nope. Bye. Good talking to you. You too. Bye. Thank you. He's you trying to find that quit button. <laughs> I just found it. <laughs> <that. laughs> Well, that was a really good time. I enjoyed our time with Destiny, uh, hearing about her uh, kind of personality. Uh, I really enjoyed the bucket list conversation. I want to go to Bora Bora myself one day. Um, what about you, Paul? What did you enjoy most? Uh, you know, the thing I took away was uh, all the great bread making tips, uh, pandemic bread making. Definitely, um, definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would just suggest buying bread. If that's a possibility. Bite at the store. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that brings us to the end of this month's episode. We enjoyed our time. I hope you did too. Uh, please like uh, the, and comment and uh, subscribe so you can get the next month's video when it comes out. Uh, enjoy yourself. Till next time, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.